Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2022.5, which is their mid-year update. I covered it in that video if you want to know kind of what's new in this update. But this video is about the five different aspects or kind of themes or kind of areas of On One that I love the most, that I use the most. So these are five things that I basically just adore about On One. It's an incredibly powerful and capable all-in-one editor. I'm gonna walk through some of that in this video. Let's get going. Now, the five different areas that I'm gonna talk about are the Develop tab, the Filters, also known as Effects, the masking capability, the local adjustments, and what I like to call the utilities. So I'll pop into each of those, some of them in that order, some of them kind of slightly out of that order, which you'll see here. But I want to walk through how I edit and take advantage of all these different powerful capabilities. So here I am, unedited photo. The first thing is lens correction, which is amazing. That was updated and enhanced in the most recent update, the 2022.5 mid-year update. Lots of power and control there. I love that because it's recognizing my lens automatically. If I click and show you, it's picking up. This is an old Nikon shot from years ago. By the way, you can see the pixel dimensions up here. It's a 10 and a half meg raw file. This was shot in 2012. So it's literally a 10 year old photo. But I love the lens correction that comes in super handy. And the other thing I really like is the tone and color capability here. I'm gonna use AI Auto and give that a nice little pop, but I'm gonna come in here and do a few things just to kind of further refine and give me a little bit better visibility into the image. So maybe something about like that, maybe a little bit more vibrance. I do like the color. I'm definitely gonna amp up the color here. And so, so far, you know, I feel like I've got a better looking photo. Now you'll notice it's kind of crooked. It was probably slightly tilted on my tripod. Before I go into the crop tool, which is where I can straighten it, I'm also gonna take a look at transform, which is again, this is theme number one, which is develop. Remember, I haven't left develop yet. This is the first part of what I'm talking about here. The transform has a lot of power and capability. I'm gonna go into Keystone, and what I wanna do is just make sure all my verticals are straight. And so I go in and I just kinda of straighten that. I find a nice line, which is those windows I'm looking at. And I'm gonna do something similar over here, where I'm gonna line this up so it pretty much lines up. And I'm basically saying, those lines should be straight. Now I wanna make sure that my top is kind of straight as well. Something about like that, when you're ready, click apply, and you can see what it's done. It's basically straightened up my photo really well. I love that. The other thing, keep in mind, let me show you the before and after. There it is before, remember it looked kind of tilted, but now that I've done lens correction and fixed with transform using the keystone edits there, I've actually got a straighter photo. So I went from that to that, straighter photo, fix the verticals and all that, and I haven't even gone to the crop tool. So sometimes you don't have to crop. My major point here is this entire tab for develop, incredibly powerful, that's why it's number one. There's so much you can do, and by the way, I'm not done. This bleeds into the fifth thing I'm gonna talk about, which is utilities, but there's amazing noise reduction here in On One as well. No noise AI, fully incorporated. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. Now you can see, obviously it's a little bit brighter as well. The light's a little bit more balanced because of what I did in the tone and color section. But you can also see I've got nice, better visibility, a little bit crisper detail, things like that based on the settings here. Let's say that I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom back to fit. Once you're ready, you just click apply and it will apply that level of noise reduction to your photo. You can see it's now locked in red. So all I'm saying here is you've got massive amounts of power on the develop tab, which includes one of the utilities I'm talking, actually three of the utilities I should say, lens correction, transform, and of course, no noise. So there's a lot of utility. I call them utilities because it's not a creative edit. So I call these kind of utilities, but these things make a world of difference. So that's two topics I've already touched on, the develop and the straight power and capability of this whole tab, as well as some of the utilities here but there's other utilities I'm gonna to get to as well. But that's the first section that I wanted to talk about. The second one is effects or filters, and this gives you the ability to go in and add specific creative effects to your photos. I wanna add some dynamic contrast, but I only wanna apply it to the buildings and the boat. So this bleeds into item number three on my list, and that's the masking. These, all, these five ideas really go together. I've touched on develop, I've touched on utilities, I've touched on filters, which I'm kind of in the middle of, and a component of filters is masking because I generally want to apply specific parts of a filter to specific parts of an image. I never necessarily want to apply everything 
from that filter to the entire photo. So that's where masking comes in. In this case, I'm gonna use AI Quick Mask. For drop, I can just come in and paint in red along the sky and just say, look, I do not want this dynamic contrast in the sky. I also, by the way, don't want it in the water. So you just come along here and you paint a little red wherever you don't want that edit to apply. And then the green or keep is telling on one, hey, I do want this addition of dynamic contrast, which gives a little bit of crunch, a little bit of, uh, feels like sharpening, almost like clarity. Uh, you're telling on one, I do want it where things are green. So paint a little bit like that, give it a little information, click apply and let it calculate the mask for you. And look at that, I mean, nearly perfect mask and it only took me a couple of seconds. I'm gonna click drop, I'm gonna come in here and do a little bit more refining along some of this water. You just paint back over it uh, just to make sure that you're getting rid of the stuff you wanna get rid of. And then once again, hit apply to update it further. It takes a couple seconds to render and there you go. It's effectively perfect, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna click done. And so now, as you can see, if I click on mask view, you can see where the mask is applied. You can refine it further if you want to. I recognize the windows probably should be in white. It's fine. Like I said, you can adjust, but what I wanted to do is quickly apply dynamic contrast only to the buildings and the boats. So if you look at the before and the after, that's given me that super detailed control over that. But the other thing that I've done, more importantly than just applying that where I wanted it, is I've isolated, in my opinion, I've isolated the two different sections of the photo that I wanna edit separately. That is the man-made structures I wanted to do that with, but now that I've got a mask, I can use the inverse of that to work on the sky and the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the mask and I'm gonna add a new filter and I'm gonna to go to Color Enhancer. Now, as you can see, Color Enhancer, another great filter here on the Effects tab, gives you a lot of power and control. I'm gonna go ahead and click Fall. Uh, that's a preset, if you will. I'm gonna click on the Masking tab. I'm gonna click Paste, but I'm gonna click Invert. So if I view the mask, white reveals, black conceals. So my edits are gonna be revealed where you see the white, which is basically the sky and the water. So close the masking area. I've already applied the fall preset. So if you look at the before and the after, that's where I am, but I wanna do a little bit more. I think I'm gonna go a little bit warmer, a little bit more tint, a little bit more saturation, and a little bit more vibrance. I'm just really popping those colors in the sky and the water. So before and after, I've ratcheted that intensity up a little bit, but it's still, it's not over the top. It's not unrealistic. This is not a clown vomit HDR sunset, and trust me, I've done plenty of those, but this is a nice, beautiful, colorful, but not overly saturated sunset. I could even go more if I wanted to, just to give it a little bit more pop. One more time, if I show you the before and the after, I think I've got a beautiful looking sunset going here. Okay, so we talked about all the power in the develop tab. We touched on some of the utilities. We talked about effects, also called filters in my uh, lexicon at least, and we talked about masking. Those are four of the areas that I think on one really shines, but there's another one and that is local adjustments. And that gives you, as the name implies, the ability to go in and customize certain things in certain areas of the photo. I'm gonna reset that to zero. I'm gonna go into masking. And what I wanna do here is get a gradient mask, linear top, and I'm just gonna drop that in right here. Slightly tilt it. I wanna expand that gradient zone just to kind of smooth the transition. And then I'm gonna come in uh, over here and just slightly brighten it. As you can see, all I'm basically doing is white reveals, black conceals, basically brightening area where it's white. So I'm just getting a little bit better visibility into the foreground. And that's something I often have to do with sunset shots, especially if you kind of expose for the sky, which I kind of did in this one. Other things are a bit darker. So if you look at the before and the after, I think I've got a better looking photo. I can add another adjustment. And this time, remember, I copied that mask earlier and pasted it. I'm gonna paste it again. So I've got a mask now in local adjustments specific to those man-made structures. Close the masking section, reset exposure to zero, and I'm actually just gonna brighten it just a tad. Just a little bit, maybe give it a tad uh, of warmth, like a one or a two, maybe a tad of tint, like one or two and maybe a slight bump in vibrance as well. I don't wanna overdo it, I just wanna get a little bit more intensity there. And in fact, I think I'll take the temperature down to one. So if you look at the before 
and the after, just a little bit more color and brightness on those areas. Now, the other thing you can do with local adjustments is actually treat it as a global adjustment. So I'm gonna come in here. Now, black is the default, which means nothing's being masked in because this is a local adjustment, which means you wanna create a mask for a specific area. That's why it defaults to black, at least in my opinion. But I don't wanna, uh, in this case, do a local adjustment. I wanna use the local adjustment tool to apply a global adjustment. So I'm gonna invert it, make everything white, which means everything I do here will apply across the entire photo. However, I don't want that exposure going down. So I reset that to zero, and all I wanna do is just come in and do what I consider some global adjustments, which is gonna be some of the basic stuff that I would normally do in the develop tab. And sometimes I find myself coming in and slightly adding to that here as a local in the, I should say, in the local adjustment tab, but as a global adjustment. I'm also gonna adjust the temperature and the tint just to take a look at it. I might actually go a slight bit bluer, maybe a little bit more on the tint to get a little bit more of that kind of magenta mood, maybe a little bit more saturation and a little bit more vibrance. I'm in the local adjustments, but I applied it across the entire photo without masking it in. So that's what I was like before. And that's what I'm like now. I think that looks fantastic. I love this photo. It's one of my favorite photos. And yet, as you can see, it was taken 12 years ago with a 10 megapixel camera. And that's one of the things that's, you know, uh, a challenge about having photos that go back a really long time when you had much older cameras, which, you know, 12 megapixel these days, my camera's, I think, 42 megapixel. And you can go well beyond that, which means you can make a lot larger prints. But that's another great thing about On One. And this circles back to what I talked about earlier, one of my five areas, which is the utilities. And the utility I'm talking about is Resize AI. Resize AI is built in now in this mid-year update. And as you can see here, my width and height, 4,200 pixels by 2,800 roughly, but I can come in to resize, let's say by percentage, and let's say I want to go to 3X, that's 300. So when I do that, watch these pixel dimensions, you can see that went to 12,000 by 8,500 roughly. So I've now basically massively enlarged a photo that I took 10 years ago and made it as though it's taken with a much more modern camera. And of course, the last piece of the utilities, in addition to Resize AI, is the export menu that just gives you so many options. I've come in and I've renamed this file. And as you can see, you've got multiple export presets as well as a lot of different capability here. If I wanna include that resize, I've got sharpening, I can adjust metadata, I can even add a watermark if I want to. So that export plus resize, plus all the things I did in the beginning, which is no noise, lens correction, and also the transform. Those are the utilities that I'm talking about. Add that to the develop capability, all the effects or filters capabilities, all the masking capabilities, and last but not least, local adjustments. Those are the five different parts of On One that I use all the time, that I love, and I think are just fantastic. So I can just click here to export my photo. So you put all that together and you've got an incredibly powerful editor, which is why I love using the product. Let me show you what we did to this photo, starting with where we were and where we ended up. There it is before and there it is now. I mean, just a massive overall difference in the photo, taking advantage of all the power and the capability of the develop tab, all the different utilities that I talked about, the filters, the local adjustments, the masking, all that comes together and you can create beautiful photos really with not a lot of effort. It's fun, it's powerful, I love it. Those are some of the things that I love about On One. Thanks for watching my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas about how to edit your own photos. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another video. You guys take care and until then, adios.